It seems Nintendo is finally ready to reveal more about Hyrule Warriors, as the Japanese website has unveiled new story details, character profiles, and even a look at a new stage, yet it seems like there's more mystery than ever surrounding this Legend of Zelda spin-off. Now we've already talked about it at length in two separate discussions, but there's always more to find, and that's why we have the old analysis machine to see what other kinds of secrets and hidden details we can find. We'd also like to thank Streets Ahead for the initial translations, and Heatman for his personal help with a few more. Of course, be sure to watch our previous analysis, as we'll be focusing solely on the new information this time, so let's get started. The story of the game is at once classic and new. The official website tells of a time when Hyrule almost fell into the hands of evil when a hero wearing a green tunic appeared to stop it. Victorious, the hero broke the evil spirit into four pieces, hoping that this would prevent its return. He somehow sent three pieces into the depths of space-time and sealed the fourth piece with the Master Sword. Ever since that time, generations have passed and a sorceress has used a crystal to watch the equilibrium between the Triforce. While we don't know if it was always the same sorceress, in more recent times, Sia was supposed to keep an eye out for any kind of disturbance, but instead found herself the one corrupted. She was once a good person and came to admire Link, a young knight in training, but her jealousy was ignited when she saw how much time Princess Zelda was able to spend with him. Eventually, the jealousy and the influence of the evil being chased away any good in her, and she brought chaos to Hyrule. Link must now stand against her and her minions and bring peace to Hyrule while searching for the missing Zelda. Even without the influence of Dynasty Warriors, this is a very different kind of Zelda story. Jealousy has never been used as an exciting factor, so it begs the question of just how close are Link and Zelda this time around. Is this actually a romantic relationship, or are they just friends and Sia simply doesn't want anyone to be close to Link but her? In addition to this story summary, we also have some artwork that's likely from the opening cutscene. It's done in an art style reminiscent of Wind Waker, except the designs are completely unique. We've been working off the assumption that Hyrule Warriors takes place sometime after Skyward Sword and before Ocarina of Time thanks to some of the locations revealed so far. We'll detail those soon, but for now, could the artwork be of Link and Zelda from Skyward Sword? It doesn't seem likely since Zelda never wore anything like that in the game and Link's tunic didn't have a yellow trim. This seems to be a completely new Link in Zelda that's never been shown before, especially since we've never seen Link seal an evil in space-time. But who was that evil that was sealed? Demise would be the obvious choice, but the differences in art seem to strike down that theory. More curious is the artwork featuring the portal. There's no real context for it in the story summary unless this is a portal to the space-time that the evil was sealed in. After all, there is a chain wrapped around the feminine figure that segments it into four parts, just as the story stated. The other possibility is that it's depicting Sia's corruption, but the presence of a portal doesn't make sense since we see Sia standing in front of one in other screens unshackled. Unfortunately, that's all we know about the story as far as what we've been directly told. But there are many other clues hidden in the characters themselves. First up is Link, who is described as an exceptionally strong soldier in Hyrule's army. He's a kind boy who can speak with fairies and has a strong sense of justice that makes him stand against evil no matter the odds. At first, we thought that this might be a clue that Link can speak in Hyrule Warriors, but it likely means he'll speak in the same way that Navi and Link spoke in Ocarina of Time. Fittingly, we can see that he also has the mark of the Triforce of Courage on his hand. What we don't quite understand is what qualifies Link to be the hero. Even though he's strong, so strong that a blue aura surrounds Link and the other soldier when he's training, what makes him immediately qualified to lead men? Is it just because he bears the Triforce of Courage? And could this fight between Link and the soldier actually be a tutorial sequence? After all, Link is still in his trainee gear. Link's fighting style looks like it's going to be pretty customizable. His main weapon is a sword, which allows him to use fast footwork on enemies, but we've already seen him use the fire rod in the original trailer as well, so his combos can definitely change. However, the latest batch of screenshots show Link with three different sword and shield combinations. It appears that he'll start off with a practice wooden sword and shield, before progressing to a normal sword and blue shield, and eventually winding up with the master sword and Hylian shield. But will he naturally be given these at predetermined points, or will he traverse dungeons to find them? Between all of these combinations, we see different finishers and even different beam attacks. There's a horizontal slice which we also saw in the trailer, as well as a new vertical beam. This actually seems to be causing some kind of small explosion when it strikes an enemy, though we don't know if it's just an effect or additional damage. What's most curious though is what seems to be a new Musou attack. Musos are powerful special moves in the Dynasty Warriors games that grant temporary invincibility while being performed. We've already seen one in the form of Link's spin attack, and even see the beginnings of it here with the blue light at the tip of Link's sword. However, another screen shows Link in the same pose while symbols and energy burst out from around him. We don't recognize the symbols, but could they mean anything? What if this isn't a Musou attack and instead him using some kind of magic as a sub-item? We've seen something like that before in Ocarina of Time with Din's Fire. 
but Link won't be the only playable character. Impa will also be joining in on the fight. She's described as the commanding officer of the Hyrule Imperial Guard and an attendant of Princess Zelda. She's also the leader of the Sheikah who protect the royal family from the shadows. Impa is said to care little for herself and instead dedicates herself fully to the safety of the royal family. And while Impa looks remarkably similar to her incarnation in Skyward Sword, right down to her belt and the feathers at her side, this one is indeed different. Her Sheikah symbol is no longer tattooed on her forehead, but worn on her breastplate. Instead, she has a new tattoo on her left eye. Impa's fighting style also seems to be very different from Link's. She uses a giant longsword in quick succession to precisely take out enemies and is considered a swordmaster with precise footwork. This style can be seen in the screenshots as well. In this one, we can see enemies being smacked away even though her sword is still in its sheath. This could imply that she uses a style of quickly drawing and sheathing her sword, which usually indicates incredible precision. However, the sword can also be driven in the ground in front of her. We don't know how the move works completely, but it could be that she slams the sword in front of her and dashes back while simultaneously retrieving the blade. What's really unique about her though is how she seems to mix power with her quick movements. The previous screen showed her speed, but here we see Impa pile driving her sword into a crowd of enemies. It's certainly a unique maneuver. Meanwhile, some of her moves appear to be water-based. We're not sure if these are her Muso attacks or some kind of magic, but they do appear similar to some of Link's attacks. In one, we see a water shock wave emanating from her as she slashes forward, while in another, she summons liquid versions of her sword all around her before sending them out at enemies. Whether it's Muso or magic, it's certainly impressive. Impa even seems to be able to use this water for her own version of Link's beam attack. But that's not what has us curious. It's her only good look at her sword, and we can see that it has the symbol of the Gorons on it. In Ocarina of Time, it symbolized the spiritual stone of fire, so one might think that she should be using fire attacks. But that's assuming the elemental power is an innate part of the sword, but that seems unlikely specifically because she's using water attacks instead of fire. The symbol could merely mean that her sword was originally forged by the Gorons. We haven't seen them yet, but it seems like a safe bet that we will. In addition to the heroes, we also got a first look at the villains with the sorceress Sia looking to take the main role. But beyond her backstory, we don't know much about her. How did she come to admire Link? How does she protect the equilibrium of the Triforce? And what are her origins? It does appear that she's a member of the Sheikah based on her darker skin, white hair, tattoos, and even the feathers at her collar. There are some other theories on her origins too. One states that she might be one of the twin Rova sisters based on her witch-like powers, while another is the visual similarities she shares with the Poe Meg from Ocarina of Time. It's too soon to say which of these theories is correct, but they all cast Sia in an interesting light. Curiously, all the screenshots of Sia show her in what appears to be the Lunaru Gorge, where she has opened some kind of space-time portal. Although it looks similar to the portal in Skyward Sword, we don't think they're directly related as the symbols around the edge are completely different. This instead could be Sia's attempt to bring back the ancient evil, and it almost looks like some kind of energy is coming out of the portal. Does she succeed early on and the rest of the game is spent with the heroes combating this evil? It's difficult to say exactly, especially since one of the screens appears to show her emanating some kind of power. Is she being possessed or is she simply demonstrating her power? Sia even has two minions, Valga and Wizro. Valga is described as having some kind of deal with Sia in order to obtain great power, yet he also has some kind of honor to him as he wants to take opponents head on. What's truly striking though is the way he looks. His armor and helmet are remarkably similar to Volvagia, the dragon boss from Ocarina of Time. Even his hands look like Volvagia's, and his lance is described as being reminiscent of a dragon's claw. And with the similarity in names, we might just be looking at the human precursor of Volvagia. But how is that possible? Well, we have a few theories. The power he obtained from Sia can be seen while he's powering up. Perhaps eventually he will transform into his Volvagia form. Then Link could seal him in Death Mountain. Although if you know your Ocarina of Time history, the Gorons describe Volvagia as having been sealed by a Goron with the Megaton Hammer. But in Ocarina of Time, Link was made an honorary Goron for his help. Perhaps the same thing happens to this Link and over time he's only remembered as an actual Goron. Far-fetched, yes, but it is possible. Then there's Wizro, who is surprisingly tricky to pin down. He's described as originating from a ring that gained power from whoever wore it until Sia gave him a physical form. And you can even see the ring on his hand. Yet despite Sia essentially being his mother, he only seems attracted to whoever's strongest. The question is, 
What are his origins? It seems like simple enough of an answer based on his name, which suggests some kind of connection to the common Wizrobe enemy. Could he be their origin? Even the description of his attacks being magic pulses and bullets fit the Wizrobes, but his design, while similar, doesn't exactly match the classic look of those enemies. So an alternate theory has sprung up stating that he could be the Poe Collector from Ocarina of Time since they look remarkably similar, including the single red eye. But this flies in the face of another theory regarding the Poe Collector, one that states that he's actually the same soldier that resided in the storage room during Young Link's time in Ocarina of Time. If that's true, there's almost no way that the Poe Collector and Wizro could be one and the same. But it is just a theory, although Wizro being the origin of the Wizrobe seemed likely, only with a much different design, similar to how the ones found in Wind Waker looked completely different from the ones that came before. That's all the characters we know about for now, but we also got a better look at some of the stages. The first is Hyrule Field, which also seems to contain Hyrule Castle. This is probably the first area in the game since we can see Link training in what appears to be a part of the castle. It would also explain how he and Zelda were able to become so close. Hyrule Castle itself looks to be a precursor to the one found in Ocarina of Time, though there's no sign of Castle Town. However, there is a strange symbol on the front wall of this screen. The problem is we can't identify it at all. It alternatively looks like a long-beaked bird with a sword on its back, or a one-eyed man with long ears and a staff. Either way, we've never seen this symbol before. Could it be some kind of symbol for the soldiers in training? This screenshot doesn't seem to be showing anything significant at first until you look closely at the rocks on the left side. They appear to be blocking a bridge. In the new information given, it was stated that bombs won't just be used for offense, so this could be the first example of that. Bomb the rock to clear the way across this bridge. Perhaps the nearby building is even where we see Link find a chest with the bomb inside. If not, then will each area contain some kind of dungeon? The screenshot also shows the first instance of tall grass, which could mean that it could be cut down for hearts or maybe even rupees. Finally, there's a screen of what appears to be a great fairy fountain. We can even see pink lights around which are likely a few of the fairies. The question is, where is this located? Usually these are hidden away, but the presence of the Grey Control Point Jewels means that this is an area that can be fought in and won. Unless there are secret control points, this might actually be inside Hyrule Castle itself. After all, Link is said to be able to speak to the fairies. Maybe this is where he learns that he has that ability. The attack on Hyrule Field seems to be led by Volga based on the background of his screens, and Lanayru Gorge is where Wizro is first encountered. The gorge is described as a wasteland that rests on steep cliffs. Near the ruins at the north of the gorge is terrain that, according to our translation, exists exhibits an ominous air thanks to the malevolent power that lives in the ruins. Is it referring to the ancient evil that Sia is likely trying to summon, or Wizro's presence? We believe the former, but this stage is significant for several other reasons. For one, the Lanayru Gorge also appeared in Skyward Sword and was where you could meet Lanayru the Thunder Dragon. Perhaps these dragon statues are depicting him. The gorge was more of a desert in that game, though there are still hints of that past in some of the screenshots. It's likely been several generations since the time of Skyward Sword. Could the influence of that evil power be what corrupted this place further? And are these ruins what remain of the buildings in Skyward Sword, or perhaps a precursor to the Gerudo Fortress? Another screen shows an area with a flowing river of lava and wooden embattlements. It's actually remarkably similar to the Elden Volcano in Skyward Sword. Could this version of Hyrule be a transitional stage between Skyward Sword and the Ocarina of Time? It's difficult to say, but the similarities are intriguing. But the most mysterious picture is artwork depicting a floating island above Hyrule Castle. In fact, this island seems to be Skyloft since the statue of the goddess can be seen on the smaller island and birds are flying all around. These could be the loft wings. But is the island falling or rising? We believe falling because the land lacks a crater where you'd expect it to be. Skyloft seems to be emerging from the ominous clouds above it that could actually be another space-time portal. It's a crazy idea, but could the evil actually be pulling in characters and places from all of Hyrule's history to this present time? It would give the developers a way to have iconic characters and set pieces appear in Hyrule Warriors. This would also help reconcile all of the Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time connections. In fact, we can even see that the Stall Children, first seen in Ocarina of Time, will appear as an enemy here too as seen on this Hyrule Warriors artwork. This directly puts an Ocarina of Time enemy design side by side with a Skyward Sword enemy being the Bokoblins. Whatever the reason, Hyrule Warriors is shaping up to be a truly unique entry in the Zelda series. As E3 approaches, we'll have to see what else the game has to offer. If you like this video, make sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GameXplain. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned to GameXplain for more on Hyrule Warriors and other things gaming too.